Now I want to spend just a few minutes quickly creating a class and using it. Uh, and I've got to pause for a moment to receive an email. Margaret, did you send me the email? I just hit send. OK. Yeah, terrific. So here I went to piazza.com. Whoops. Uh, I'm, I want to keep that. I went to piazza.com. And uh, I'm going to click on professors and TAs get started. And I'm at University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm going to create a class. Oops. This would be the method you would use if you were in Moodle right now, or if you did not want to use the default one that was created in D2L for you. I'm creating Garbage 102 in spring 2016. And by the way, I've learned to include spring 2016, the semester, uh, in the course, because otherwise, next fall, you know, if I use Garbage 102 and I teach it next fall, now I've got two Garbage 102s and I can't tell them apart. And you can't create two Garbage 102s. And you can't so use the name once you've created a course? You can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't. Okay. But eventually, well, I think, yeah. eventually I'll, I'll see in my menu of courses five copies and I want to know which is which. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so absolutely. then I'm going to click Create a New Class. And it's uh, Garbage 102. That's the number. My estimated enrollment today is about 12. And uh, I'm affiliated with UW-Madison, and I create the class. And I'm going to make this a little bigger if I can. There. I'm joining as professor. And I will put my address in here. Now I can log in to see my class, it says. Whoops. Oh boy, and do I know how to log in Piazza? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm sorry this didn't happen on my machine. I don't know how to log yeah, in Piazza. To I'm sorry? If you don't have to have your password Yeah. Let's see if I can get in. I got in. Great. I, I guess. <laughs> OK, so here I am in Garbage 102, brand new course. Uh, what I, here I guess I have uh, a, a minimal setup page. So when's the first day of class? Today's fine, but you know, I could adjust that if I want. Enroll my students, and tragically I. No, if you, uh, if you hit Command D, I've got it all. Oh, you have it too. OK, so I copied and pasted from uh, Margaret's email to get your email addresses. So I'm pasting here. There are the email addresses of uh, all of us. I click Enroll Students. And uh, I believe you will all receive email now. So if you can, please check your email for a link from Piazza. And are there other TAs and instructors in my course? Yes. So I'm going to add uh, John and Margaret. And John, remind me of your John. Email. Martin at And And I'm going to enroll them both as TAs. And now they should have received an email, or should shortly be receiving an email. And um, now I'm not certain what the easiest way to do is from here, but now I go to Manage Class. And in Manage Class, I've got a lot of the same things I had before. Uh, but what am I looking for? Let's see. One thing I, so question and answer settings. There's one on uh, student polls, enable or disable. And I want uh, disable because then only instructors will be able to post polls. I don't want students posting polls. Uh, this isn't too important. I don't think the students would think of posting polls anyway. Oh, we should have save changes. Though. And save changes. <laughs> Students would totally post polls. Like, should we have, should we have a final this year? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody well, says no. <laughs> well, in your culture, yeah, right. So my, my students, they, they might do that, I suppose. Then I play with these folders. And these folders are just a way to organize uh, you know, what's the topic of the question. So I'm going to choose Edit Default Folders, because otherwise I can't edit them. And there's Homework Folders. And I want, let's say, oops, i got to click Edit here to be able to change them. And I'm changing my number of homework folders to three. I want uh, 
quiz folders, because <coughs> I use some online quizzes. And let's say there are two of those. And uh, I guess I can click Add here. And uh, then here's some folders that I either want or don't want. I don't want a project folder, so I'm removing it. I do want an exam folder, I don't <coughs> want a logistics folder, and I do want an other folder. And then it's got this folders preview. I've got homeworks one, two, and three, quizzes one and two, my exam, and other. And those are going to be the categories that are available to students. And uh, now I think I'm done. And now I go back to uh, Q&A. And it seems the new classes are already always populated with these five posts that come from Piazza. And if you're smart, you read them. If you're me, you click on them. Well, actually, let me show you something. So I use uh, this menu now <coughs> to, to select which of the posts I want to see. So these are five or six posts that came uh, with the system. And if I click on unread, it shows me which posts haven't I read, and that's all of them. I haven't read any. Unresolved, uh, which ones are questions that I haven't answered, and there aren't any. I can click this little X to remove the shortcut, uh, and now I see all my posts again. But I don't want, whoops. I want to, uh, what I usually do is just click through these so that I've read them all. So here I am reading them. And now when I click on red, I see nothing. And now I'm ready to start my class. And you probably should read the posts. I probably should read the posts. But you, you don't actually have to. Oh, OK. I <laughs> didn't realize that. Um, and I want this gone too. So I've clicked on it to read. And now there's nothing on red. Now at this point, uh, I take. Uh, this interface is a little different than what I'm used to. I apologize for that. I want, oh, there we go. I grab that link and I post a link. Uh, I post that link in my syllabus. So that's my students' access to this. And again, John has an easier way. Now we can start doing question and answer. So have any of you received that email? So great. Would somebody please ask a question like, what time is it? And uh, <laughs> I guess I can show how to do this. I. Uh, where can I click? I'm going to click New Post. So I'm going to post one as a teacher. And one line summary, uh, time. And this is in the other folder. So I'm selecting the folder. And I want to know what time is it. And there is a Post My Note button. And now that post is out there. And I wonder if one of you folks would be so kind as to answer that. Uh, and then we'll see what I see. And then meanwhile, if you would be so kind, click a, a new post uh, by clicking this and ask me some silly question. There we go. So there I got an answer uh, that quickly from a student. And in fact, I'm satisfied with that. So I'm going to click, well, I won't do anything yet. If I click unresolve now, this post is showing here. But in fact, I'm happy with her answer. So I'm going to click resolved on this. And uh, now if I click on Resolved, that post is gone. Uh, John and anybody else, could you post a couple of silly questions, please? So once you, once you have resolved them all, can you go back and see the list of all of them? I can. So like John Martin that you posted before isn't showing up now. Yeah. But we could go look at it. Yeah. So I'm going to, it says filtering by unresolved questions. So I'm only seeing the ones I want to see right now. Uh, but if I remove the shortcut either with this or this X, oops, I'm going to click the X, I guess. Now I see uh, all the posts originally. And these are the ones that were from Piazza, I think. This is the one from John, is that right? Sure. So I shouldn't have clicked through these so fast. Uh, he says, hello, can you expand on the use? Uh, yes, let's talk live. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to click resolved because I think this is going to please her. And. Uh, Post it. And. Uh, well, now, shouldn't you let the students decide whether that's a resolved answer or I not? I could, but they can, they can, uh, they can you know, ask follow up follow questions. Okay. So, so, students can mark things as resolved also? Yes, yes. And John's right that maybe I should leave it. So, I clicked on resolved again to see what's the new question since I was here last. Oh, here's a what time is it? And there's a follow up, which is great. What's my favorite dog breed? And the answer is Kali. Uh, and actually, I can preview this if I want. So uh, many of you won't care about this, but those of you who use math notation, you can use LaTeX math notation. So uh, 
I can type double dollars and start doing la or LaTeX math notation. So square root of n, uh, oops. And I can preview my math notation or really anything else before sending it to students. And there that showed up as square root of n. Ooh. I'm happy that I did it right. So now I'll click post. And uh, now we're done with that question. Square root of n is not a breed of dog that I'm We got a problem, yeah. <laughs> so the truth is this is now 98% of what I know about Piazza. <laughs> and uh, I, I would love to see a few more questions. I'll click on resolve and see if anybody else has asked a question. Yeah, so will this be on the quiz? Great. Thank you for whoever asked that. Uh, it says it's Angela. So uh, hi, Angela. Yes, it's on the quiz. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think any time I put an instructor's answer, it automatically gets resolved. Uh, by the way, another feature I use, I, I mark some things good questions. And that's one way to draw attention to them. And watch over here. I think that it'll be marked a little bit. Yeah, the instructor thinks this is a good question. So that calls other students' attention to it. I'm not real good at this, though, because <coughs> I forget to use it for 10 posts in a row. And I don't go back and think, find which ones were the good questions. Uh, and students have the opportunity to click good answer also. Uh, and I've never received a good answer click. <laughs> and here's somebody who says it's cool, but uh, she left this resolved, so I've read it and I'm happy. Again, I click on resolve and there's nothing to do, so I go to bed. So I knew that the good answer is used a lot with when students give each other kudos for helping, like, mm -hmm. you explained that really well to me. Thank you, that kind of a thing. And I don't know if it's, if, I've never been using it for instructors. Yeah. <laughs> but an instructor could use it to indicate this is a correct answer. Yes. Like if a student answers another an if a student answers another student's question, then an instructor could click it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you have to type nothing. You can just say good answer and, and go I, ahead. <laughs> I do do that, and I love it okay. when students jump in and answer. Cool. Yeah. And uh, so again, in what I would do next, I would like to get the, the students and the TAs more involved in the answering process. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Uh, you know, and it conflicts with my wanting to answer things quickly. <laughs> um, but when students do get in there and answer questions, uh, I love clicking good answer. Um, and sometimes they do a real good job. All right. I promise to show you how easy it was to do this in from the course dashboard. So I have a random course that John's Playground. I've never used Piazza in this course before. But if I go to communications here, there's Piazza Q&A. And it's already sort of, it's not fully set up already, but it, it, it recognizes, it's integrated with D2L. So I actually don't think there's anybody in this class right now, but I'll presume that it might be. It already takes the stuff from D2L, puts it in so I don't have to put all that in. I don't have to create a password or any of that other sort of stuff because it's just automatically integrated. So there, I just set up a Piazza class for this John's Playground class. In like um, two clicks, really? In like two clicks. It was so easy. I understand that the Canvas integration will be like that as well. I don't know if Moodle integration will ever get to that point. But. Can I ask a question? Yep. I'm in one of my courses now. We don't have the communications tab on the top. You okay. Have, you have to add that? Or? In D2L, yep. And you, can add, you can add that. It's probably okay. just not part of your default set. It is part of the UW Madison default set, correct? So the next thing I want to do is, is in your Piazza thing, if you go up to where you're logged in, you should be able to click on this and you will see that you should be in more than one course right now, right? You should also be in AAL active ATLP 101. Yes? All right. Go there. I have pre-populated ATLP 101 with a bunch of questions that you can answer. And what I wanted to do was, so thermodynamics question. Here we've got dinner and daughter. And you can answer these questions. You can, what I wanted to do is, is put in a, a variety of questions so that you can see how they work. You can add graphics, you can add videos, you can add different media things. 
And so take like two minutes and play around, go pick your favorite question um, or skip through a couple of them and, and just sort of see what some of these different types of questions are looking like. And I'll do the same thing up here as well. On the activity sheet, there's a, there's a section that is play around as a student. So if you need an idea of something to do, go look at that list. There's like 12 things you can do as a student. Pick one, go figure out how to do it. Yep, and that's important because in about three minutes, I'm going to change you all over to instructors. And then you're going to get a chance to create questions and play around as instructors and mark things as resolved and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Jan. All right, so click up here the one garbage 102. And hit that clip. Click on that, and there you are. Last spring, we had Brian Esselman come talk about how he used uh, Piazza in his organic chemistry class. And one of the things that he was um, very clear on is the types of questions that work best for Piazza are ones that have unique, definitive answers. And that way, the students can work together, collaborate, and come up with one right answer. Um, John Zimbrunnen was sitting here from political science. And he was like, on the other hand, it would be kind of interesting to have the students come to a consensus on a political science type question where they can come up with a right answer that it's not a right, unique, definitive answer, but it's one that can, they can sort of collaborate together and come up on consensus with. So I think that there are, there are multiple answers to this question of what type of question works best. Depends on how you use it. Are you ready to be instructors? Or should I give you another minute? <laughs> I'll give you another minute. Georgina, how is it working on the mobile? Fine. Works good? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. And the iPad version works well as well? It's okay. It keeps popping up my um, my keyboard when I just click on anything. So okay. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps doing that. But sometimes these tools work really good on the laptop and really terrible on mobile, or they'll work good on mobile but be really weird on iPad. And does anybody have a mo uh, Android device? Working good. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. And I presume it works well on the surface. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And you'll, uh, this is what we we love to see students help students. <laughs> So to change that, you can change all of the settings under Manage Class. And you'll see on the top here these Q&A resources, statistics, and Manage Class. You might not have that as Manage Class because you're students right now. Am I right? Yeah. All right. As an instructor, I have that. And this is where I can change the name. I could put 2016 in here when I'm done with the semester. And that way it's good. I can change the name. I can change the course start date using the calendar function here. There is a sign-up link that I can 
direct students to go to to automatically sign up here. Um, the class link that if I just wanted to have it in my Moodle class as a link, that will get me here automatically. Um, but here is where, let's see, I think I still have, I'm going to add you guys as students. Wait, you're already there as students. Let me all add you as TAs. And now I get the choice as to whether I, you want to be a TA or a professor. And I actually don't know what the differences are between the duties or responsibilities or abilities of the TA versus the abilities of the professor. So I'm just going to give you all professor stuff and let you um, change that on your own. I'm going to stay, I don't know, I think after this, I'm gonna, I'll, be a, I'll be your student and Margaret will be your student. <laughs> and that way you'll have some students in the class to beat up on. All right, so you're all instructors. Oh, and I save changes. How do I do that? I think that, yes. So now you should all have, I think, this manage enrollment or manage class thing on the top, right? Yes, that worked. I love when demos work. <laughs> so now you can go in and you can add questions, you can add polls, you can resolve and unresolve things. You have all the controls. Feel the power. And I think what we'll do is we'll leave this um, at this stage where you're in garbage as a student and you're in this, you can actually change yourself back and forth now at this point um, because you have the power, I think. I'm pretty sure that, I, that you can. So anybody want to do that and see if they can't change themselves back once they change themselves as a student? Do you have to change your whole status or is there like a view as student? There is a view as student oh. somewhere. I don't remember where that is though. Oh, you can create groups. So if you have, you don't want all 30 of your students working on the same question, create a group and say, all right, you five work on this question and you five will work on this question. And I believe at that point you can or you can make it visible to all students or you can make it um, not visible or visible but not able to add to. You can, you know, write privileges or just read privileges or different levels of privacy. And there's one other thing that I wanted to show you which was kind of cool. And that is in the question, across the top here, they have this bar here for question history. So if you want to see how a, your students got together, the top answer will always be at at the top here, right underneath it. But if you want to see how they got to that answer, because it's wiki style, they write over each other's answer. And if you'd like to, <coughs> you can take the slider and go back and see all of the different questions that led up to this question just by pulling the slider around. Now, this is not a great question to answer because there have only been like three answers to it. But you can imagine if it were thermodynamics class, you would, and you had 30 students, you might have 20 answers there that you can go through that eventually they came up with the right one, but you can kind of look through and see what mistakes did they make along the way of coming to the right answer and which students, um, which students got it right away and which students are still struggling with it, which is kind of a neat way to do that, deal with this. So what are your thoughts? Vanessa. I have a question. Right okay. <laughs> kind of um, is it possible to carry over content from one semester to another? Yes. So this content right here, we created for last spring when um, Brian Esselman was in. 
So, so then you just can keep whatever is renamed and it's gone? Yep, and you can take the students out. You can take old student um, info out, but you can keep the same content in there, yes. Is there, is there a clone class option, too? Because that might be another way. I mean, if you want to leave your yes. students, John's there it is, yeah. is it nodding. Okay, cool. Yep. So you could do that either way, then. You could take out the old students and put in the new students and change the name of the class, or you could clone the class. Yeah, right here underneath the, where it's ALTP 101, and it's your list of classes. You can create a class, or you can clone this class. So you can go to whatever class you were in and clone it there. Now, I don't know exactly how much of that information shows up, I imagine it's just the questions and not the students' answers to the questions. For me, when I, so I actually cloned one just a week ago, and for me, I believe all I retained was my folder structure. Okay. And the questions were all gone, and the answers were all gone, and the students were all gone. Hmm. I'm, I'm not certain of that, but that's what I think happened. Okay. And that's what I wanted, but not necessarily what I was looking for. Right. I would, well, I, would, I would want to keep the questions, I think. If I worked on questions, I would want to keep the questions. But you, that, that's your instructor questions, right? You wouldn't want to carry over student questions from a previous semester. Correct. So, okay, so that's something. Oh, right, and you get the student questions. Right, exactly. Yeah. Maybe you would if every year you had the same questions. It doesn't give the, students, the new students the opportunity. Right, but and you could always just good. go into the, the old class and copy that student's question that keeps showing up every year after year after year <laughs> and turn it into one of your questions to preempt they're asking of that question. Give it to them instead of having them give it to you. That's the way to do it. Any other thoughts? <coughs> Would this work for you? Would this work in your area? What kinds of questions do you see working or not working? What do you think about the idea of a definitive answer question versus a, a collaborative, let's gain consensus question? Virginia. I think in language we, we can use it, yeah, to uh, use the language, uh, to practice the language, discussing something that they do it. But my question is, is that you can add videos, yeah? Yes. So they can analyze something and then yep. John, Jonathan. I'm interested in how you might, so it, it facilitates this question and answer kind of thing really well. But what if you have it designed for a specific task that you need to evaluate individuals on? Would you do anything differently or how would you work on that? Where you, you kind of need to see evidence of learning from each individual who's participating? That's a good question. I don't know if I've ever heard of this as a get a grade on your participation. Okay. This comes up a lot when I, I try to find a, a communication platform for people to facilitate what would otherwise be a like a lab kind of environment. Okay. Um, particularly a course I'm working on with somebody now um, where each person needs to make a contribution and it doesn't seem like the D2L discussion forum is the right thing, and right. I, didn't, I didn't know if this was the right thing. I don't know what the right thing is. Well, what this, you could do with this is because of that question history, you could go back and see each thing and see whether they contributed yeah. something to the answer yeah. that was substantive. Is there, any but is there any data or anything like that that's generated, like an analytics kind you of stuff? You have a statistics tab, oh. so I just clicked on that. Yes. So that speaks to what I know about it, but um, it seems to tell class at a glance and then top student contributors, which in ATLP 101 2016 is no one, which is fine. Um, but you can look at, and there's a list of all the students, number of days they've been in it, posts they viewed, and contributions they've made. So this John Martin person has made 21 contributions, whereas a student, Margaret, has only made two, Margene's made one. So you can see at least the number of contributions that a yeah. student has made. You can also evaluate TAs there because it'll give you the TA uh, participation too. So you can, instead of the instructor being in at 10 o'clock at night, you can say, all right, TAs, I'll answer till 6 o'clock and then you're on or, or whatever. And you can see whether they just go home and 
party or whether they are actually contributing as TAs to the class. So that can kind of be a nice way to keep track of those as well. But yeah, I'd forgotten all about the statistics thing and there's some really interesting stuff there. I think because you guys are all, I moved you from students to instructors, uh, we don't have any students in the class right now to look at the student data. <laughs> There's a lot of teaching going on. Yeah. <laughs> and not a lot of learning, yeah. Jonathan. Not right. a lot of learning. <laughs> any other questions in our last minute here? Do students like this any better than the discussion forums that are already built into like Moodle or C2L? Um, my understanding from Brian Nesselman's talk last year was that yes, they like this much better. Well, how do your students like? I can't compare, but my students seem to like it, but I don't have experience. Margie? I always kind of look at it as, as different purposes. I think students tend to look at the discussion board more as a formal assignment, where we always want like a rich interaction going on. But if you know, if you sign them to post to the discussion board about a comment and make sure you reference something, and what, it turns into a more formal piece of, of writing. Um, where this is, to me, more like back and forth. See, the other thing that's interesting here is, er, so not only can you edit stuff, but you can also be like, I don't want to be John Martin because I'm not sure about the answer to, of this question, so I need to ask this anonymously so that people don't think that I'm a big dummy that doesn't know anything about this. So I can do that, and nobody knows that I'm asking the question, Except the instructor will know that because, but my classmates, it's not, you know, they, they can't see who I, who I am. And Piazza is designed to let the instructor know so that the instructor, so that somebody can't go in and start a flame war in there, right? Because then the instructor can be like, John, start, stop, stop causing trouble. So, <laughs> if there are no other questions, um, we are at time.